Welcome Boulder Creek High School, Class of 2020. We welcome you to your first presentation of the 2017-2018 school year from your counselors. We hope the start of your sophomore year has been positive. Your counselors, teachers, administrators, and support staff are all here to support and help you reach your goals during your high school and after. During our time today, we'll cover a lot of information. Please pay close attention and write down any questions that you may have for your counselor. We thought we'd start by introducing ourselves and showing our families. My name is Ms. Garrison and I have a big family. We're blending our families together. I have three daughters in college, one at ASU, one at Glendale Community College, and one at NAU. And I have three stepdaughters. Hannah is a junior here at Boulder Creek and Rachel is a sophomore and Abby's in eighth grade at Anthem Elementary. And I'm Mrs. Southmaid and this is my family. I have two children who both go to Boulder Creek. This is a picture of us on an extreme canopy adventure last Christmas um, in Puerto Vallarta. Today we will review the following. Who is my counselor? Remind 101, CTE and Westmac opportunities, friendly reminders, and AZCIS information. Your sophomore year may be the first time you are meeting your counselor. We wanted to remind you that if you've not already done so, be sure to come and see us. We want to meet our students. The counseling office is located in the administration building across from the front desk. Each counselor is assigned a section of the alphabet. Mrs. Garrison has letters A through C, Mrs. Overfield, D through H, Mrs. Southmaid, I through MI, Mrs. Fricker, MO through R, and Mrs. Tyrell, letters Z through Z. Mrs. Palermo is in charge of students with special services. There are two ways to contact your counselor. One, and the quickest way, is through email. Um, if you email your counselor, we can get back to you within an hour, probably. Um, so that is the best way, especially if it's a quick question. If you need to come to our office um, and have a more lengthy discussion, we'll send a pass for you. Um, you can also come to the counseling office and fill out a pass. You are able to do that before school, after school, and at lunch. Um, we don't allow students to fill out passes, for example, during second period. Um, and we do this out of respect for your teacher's class time and your learning time. We also, as counselors, want to remind you that if we send you a, a pass during your math class, for example, and you're taking a test, don't come that day. We can send a pass for you the other time, another time. It's simple for us to send you an email and, or for you to send us an email and then we'll send a pass for you. Our counseling website and counseling class are on Canvas. It has lots of information on various topics such as college planning, summer school, and testing. Please take the time to review the website and Canvas so you're aware of the information that's available. In order to communicate with our students better, Counseling does do Remind 101 for important announcements and friendly reminders. On this slide are directions to sign up for Remind. If you haven't already signed up, please take a few minutes to get out your phone and follow the directions above. Along with Remind 101, we also have created the BC Counselor Quarterly. We will use this to announce important dates regarding upcoming testing, college workshops, college visits, and course registration. You can sign up to receive the BC Quarterly by signing up on Remind 101 or viewing it on Canvas in the counseling class. When thinking about next year, we know you have more options for courses and technical programs. However, in order to take advantage of those opportunities, you need to work hard in your current classes because some of the technical pro programs offered require a C or better to qualify and be accepted. Deer Valley High Schools and Westmec offer a variety of programs that you can apply for. For example, at Deer Valley High School, they have a class for students interested in nursing or sports medicine. And at Westmec, they have programs like auto mechanic, veterinary assistant, and medical coding. You can begin applying for any career and technical program in October. Other programs available through our school district are accounting, law enforcement, architectural drafting, child development, graphic design, culinary arts, and future teachers academy. 
A complete list can be found on www.dvusd.org under the Career and Technical Education list. What programs are available at WestMEC? Keep in mind that most WestMEC programs have certain high school course requirements and grades that must be met in order to gain acceptance into the program. Those requirements can be viewed on the WestMEC webpage. The link above will give you a glimpse of what WestMEC has to offer. Feel free to view the video after this presentation. As a sophomore, you can apply to all WestMEC programs as long as you meet the requirements, which can be found on the WestMEC website. Juniors can only apply for one-year programs. If you're interested in WestMEC program, visit their website, and if you have further questions, see your counselor. If you find a program you are interested in, please fill out an application by going to dvusd.org, then click on the Career and Technical Education link. From there, you'll be able to fill out the application. Once you submit your application and receive a copy, which you're usually sent a copy through your email, you'll bring that signed application to your counselor. For WestMEC only, you will also have to complete the travel form, which is under the application link on dvusd.org. Okay, so all students who graduate from high school must complete 22 credits to earn their diploma. As a sophomore, you must have earned at least four credits your freshman year to graduate on time. However, you will have a full schedule your senior year, unless you take a class outside of the school day. If you'd like to make up a class or take a class for grade improvement, please see your counselor first. We want to make sure that taking the correct class will be able to be accepted and put on your transcript for DVUSD. To graduate from high school, you must complete the following courses. Four credits of English language arts, four credits of math, three credits of science, three credits of social studies, one credit of fine art or CTE, one credit of PE and health, and six elective credits. I do want to remind students that um, taking a world language isn't a requirement just for high school graduation. Um, that is a university requirement. So every year we always get questions in the counseling office um, that they, from students about the world language requirement. So only if you're going to university. Mm -hmm. So to apply for one of our in-state universities, you must have completed the following courses. And remember that your grade point average is very important. You do have to have your four credits of English, your four credits of math, your three credits of science, two credits of social studies, one fine art or CTE, and then as Mrs. Southmade was saying, two credits of the same world language. After you graduate from Boulder Creek, what's your plan? Mrs. Garrison and I wanted to share what our experience was after we graduated from high school. Um, I went to high school in Skowhegan, Maine, which is a very small town um, in Maine, as I said, and there were like 817 students there. Um, I think 200 in my graduating class. Um, I played field hockey, um, and yeah, and graduated in 1992. That was a little while ago, but not <laughs> as long as you with you. <laughs> no, as long as I have. So then after I graduated, I attended a small liberal arts school in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, the name of it was Western New England College, which is now Western New England University. Um, I love that college. It was small. Um, I got to meet a lot of people and was really involved at, in the peer groups and things that went on on campus. However, due to finances, my parents said, you need to transfer to the University of Maine because we can't keep sending you this money. So I ended up at the University of Maine in Orono, Maine. That is in northern Maine. And um, I will never forget my 8 a.m. biology class um, that I would walk across campus in the blizzard to get there. Um, so, but I graduated with a social work degree. And then I did my graduate work once I was married and had children and started graduate school right here in Phoenix at Ottawa University. And that's actually where I met Mrs. Garrison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went to high school in Racine, Wisconsin, where I grew up, J.I. Case High School Eagles. I graduated in 1985, so that was quite a while ago. I enjoyed high school. I was involved in student government, and I was the secretary of my class and did a lot of the planning of the fun things that happened there on our campus. 
I went to college in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, UWM. Um, that was about 45 minutes north of my home. I lived in the dorms and it was an urban um, school right in the middle of the city. So I enjoyed getting on the city bus and doing lots of things and exploring Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What about your graduate? Yeah. Oh, okay. What about graduate school? <laughs> yeah, so I studied social work. Um, and then I worked in the field for a couple years and realized that with a bachelor's in social work, I couldn't make very much money or get very many opportunities. So I went back and got my master's degree in social work as well. Um, then moved to Arizona and raised my family and went back to Ottawa, and that's where I met Miss Southmaid, and she and I had classes together to become guidance counselors, and ended up here in the Deer Valley Unified School District. So, if you have plans to attend a four-year university, um, and if it's in the state of Arizona, and out of state actually too, um, we just wanna let you know that you should be getting Caesar better in all your courses. Um, our in-state schools, they have certain admissions requirements that you have to meet, and to even be accepted. Um, their admissions requirements are not a secret. It's on their webpage. You just click on admissions and you'll see what you need to do to get into that school. Um, and as far as money for school, because that's pretty important, mm -hmm. um, you need A's and B's to be merit eligible, which is the academic money for, for a college. So it's best to avoid D's um, and D's are deficiencies. They will allow you two deficiencies on your transcripts, but if you have deficiencies, you're not gonna get scholarship money. Um, you can retake the course for great improvement, which many of our students do here. If they just have one D, they had a oops semester, which does happen. Um, they do retake that course so they can have the higher grade and be eligible for scholarships. What about out-of-state schools? What are the admission requirements for schools in California or Colorado or Vermont, for instance? There are many post-secondary opportunities for you. Did you know there are over 3,000 schools, universities, and colleges through the United States? Each of them have different admissions requirements. So we need you as students to really look at their websites and see what they might be. Sometimes you learn that a school may have to require to take four years of a lab science versus three, or three years of a world language. So the more research you do, the better chances you will be at having what you need when you graduate from high school. Okay. And I also want to add that as far as the world language, um, I've read many artic articles about students that take four years of a world language and how much universities like that. Mm -hmm. um, because it shows that you as a student went above and beyond their academic admission requirements. Um, so I would encourage you to take four years of a language. Um, you also, in order to get accepted into college, have to take college entrance exams. These are the ACT and SATs. Um, as far as what tests you should take, I think Mrs. Garrison gets, and I get asked that many times during the school year. That's up to you. Um, my best advice is that you take practice tests. Um, you're, this year, you're able to take the PSAT, which I would encourage sophomores to take, but then take it again your junior year because you can take a practice. The PSAT is a practice SAT. So you're able to take that, take a practice ACT, and decide for you what is best. Um, I want you to pay attention to the announcements in the BC Counselor Quarterly that we talked about earlier um, because there will be a sophomore workshop in the spring semester to go over what you should be doing this summer to prepare for your junior year because there is some test prep you can be doing in some college research. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also see us with questions you may have about college planning. Okay. okay. So you mentioned the PSAT. This is typically taken as a student as your junior year, but sophomores may also benefit, as Mrs. Selfmade said, for participating in this testing opportunity. The PSAT is coming up. You do need to register and sign up for it. It is October 14th, which is a Saturday this year. Um, so please get that information and sign up as soon as possible. You do want to take it again as a junior because then if you score well, you are eligible for possible merit scholarships. It's a time test. It includes sections in math, reading, and writing. The test takes about two hours and 45 minutes to complete, and you'll receive a score showing which answers you answered right and which ones were wrong so you can go forth and study for the SAT. 
To register and pay, you pay $20 for the PSAT, you go to total registration, and there is a link on the BCHS website. The last day to register and pay is September 18th, so do it tonight. There are options after you graduate besides attending a four-year college. There are many community colleges in Arizona, and some do have um, campus housing. Um, if you're curious about the community colleges that do have the campus housing, just see your counselor. Um, also, the military, if you're interested in the military, they're on our campus all the time. Just take time to stop by and visit them. Um, sometimes they're at lunch and you can see them out there. There are also many trade and vo vocational schools for you to learn about. Um, as you start your research, you can see um, any of the counselors for further clarification and guidance. I would like to show you where to begin your post-secondary plan research. You be can begin your research on the Arizona Career Information System, otherwise known as AZCIS. Please listen to all the instructions before you get out your iPads or you log on to AZCIS. To log on to AZCIS, you will type in your username and password. It's the same log on that you use to log on to the school computer. If you do not have an account already on AZCIS, you can log on by using our school username and password. Once logged on, you can create your own account, and you do this by going to My eCap. Please be sure when you're setting up your account, you use your school logon as your username and password so you can remember it easily. AZCIS is a fantastic resource for you. There's so much information on this site. You just need to take the time to review it. A few helpful resources that are on the site are the Interest Profiler, which will help you narrow down your career choice, the School Sort, which can help you begin your college search while you enter in different things that you feel are important in college, and you can also learn about scholarships and financial aid. So please take the time to review AZCIS and see your counselor with any questions that you may have. Part of Arizona's graduation requirement is, had, is to have a completed four-year plan recorded on the AZCIS website. Your four-year plan is a list of all the courses you took during your time at Boulder Creek High School. To update your four-year plan, you'll go to My ECAB tab on the homepage of AZCIS. From there, you'll click on Course Planner. Select all four years and fill in the classes that you took your freshman year the courses that you're currently in now as a sophomore, and the courses you plan to take as a junior. This plan can be changed at any time by logging on. Once you put the information in, please be sure and save so you can go back to your four-year plan anytime to make changes if needed. In counseling, believe it or not, we're already thinking about next year. <laughs> so we would like you guys to start thinking about your next year schedule also. Um, to do that, you can refer to the academic planning guide posted on the counseling webpage. We really want you guys to do this um, before you put that class down and say you want to take it. Every year we have students that are like, that wasn't the cl class I thought it was going to be, and I want to get out of the class and we can't, you know, move the class. So just make sure you've done the research before you say, I definitely want to take that class. Um, Counselors will be visiting sophomore classes in October mm -hmm. um, and will be available at that, at that time to answer any questions you will have. Um, the more research you do and the more, the more questions you ask us and your teachers about classes, um, the easier it will be in October for you to input your classes. Um, if you still have questions after we visit with you in your classroom, just email us or come fill out a pass in the counseling office. For the remainder of the class period, you will have two tasks. Number one, you are to log on to AZCIS and update your four-year plan. Then number two, if time permits, log on to AZCIS and begin some research on some possible careers, colleges, and scholarships. We hope that you have found this information helpful and we'll use AZCIS to help you begin your research with post-secondary planning.